Hi, um, I do have some videos in my Final Knowledge playlist, which are me, me having already discussed um, something I'm going to discuss here. And it has to do with um, Edmund Husserl's discussion in the, Cartesian, in the Cartesian Meditations of his experience of the other, or empathy. Um, and it's mostly, uh, it's his, not only his discussion of empathy, but it's discussion of the associative pairing and um, the intersubjectivity. This is something I haven't really um, studied in a while. I've been studying other aspects of phenomenology and even ex and even existentialism. Yeah, but um, I don't know how long ago it's been. Like maybe a year, maybe a year and a half since I made those other phenomenology videos. So I don't know. Um, first of all, I'd like to recommend to you a book for um, understanding Australian Phenomenology. This is an introduction to Australian Phenomenology by uh, Rudolf Burnett, Iso Kern, and Edward, Edward Marbach. Um, this, you know, it has a lot of good things in it. Um, this is just one of many secondary sources of phenomenology that I can, that I can recommend to you um, to help your understanding of it. Um, and I specifically think that among this book, um, that that their discussion and explanation of um, Husserl's f fifth meditation and the Cartesian meditations, their explanation of that is great because it, it's it's just a great explanation among many quotes from his of, of his um, of Husserlian of Husserl's experience of of the other or or Husserl's empathy and how he discusses the problem of experiencing the other um, and I just I want to go over that here just today I would like to go over it and um, discuss it a little bit um, first of all Husserl um, starts by saying that we have a primordial not primordial but primordial sphere or a sphere of onus. From here on, I'll say sphere of onus. It's easier. Um, we have a sphere of onus. Uh, we have a sphere of onus. We have a monad, which which will, which I'll get to here soon. Um, the sphere of onus is essentially every. It's where the eye, the eye is. The eye, not the eye, but the um, the ego pole. The eye exists. That's where the sphere of onus is. Everything that, um, everything that is um, n made known to, or the, everything, every, everything that uh, the eye knows of, you know, is within it. Nothing, you know, what's where um, nothing alien is. For us, all the, the phenomenological problem of our experience of, of the other is to discern which explicit and implicit in intentional systemacies and motivations. And in motivation, the other comes to be manifested within my transcendently apprehended consciousness to be certified as as existing. Um, Husserl proceeds through the Cartesian meditations by what also either what I lost my place. Okay. Um, it's not easy to understand what this sphere of onus or primordial sphere is. Indeed, in Hesler's reflections on, on this matter, two concepts stemming systematically from different contexts are often are often intermingled. Two, 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 two different concepts have in common the fact that both designate a sphere of the I, I, which is negatively determined by means of excluding everything other, all other consciousness. In positive terms, however, Husserl considers the sphere of onus or the primordial sphere in two respects. On the one hand, he takes it to mean the sphere of the most primordial self-givenness imaginable. And primordiality would seem for him to stand initially for primordial originality. The other, understood as alien consciousness and, the, and as the content of this consciousness, is not given in such originality. So... We're talking about everything that is self-given to the I. That's the sphere of onus. Um, and that's 
everything that is made self given to the to the eye. Um, okay. According to Husserl, the ensemble, the ensemble of of everything that is itself given in the original, and this and this includes nature as well, although not in the intersubjective sense, but only insofar as it is originally experienced by the eye. This is the whole of everything which is proper eye into the eye, which makes up that which I am in full concretion within myself, or as we also say, within my monad. Okay, so understand that the sphere of onus is everything which um, everything which is made self-given to the eye. Or um, on the one he on the one hand he takes it to mean the sphere of the most primordial self-givenness imaginable, imaginable, the sphere of the best originality conceivable, and primordi and prim primordiality would seem for him to stand initially for primordial originality. And alien consciousness as the content of this consciousness is not given in such or in such originality. So if you need more assistance in, in understanding the sphere of onus, comment below or message wherever or Twitter, whichever. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on. And then the monad. The monad is critical in the experience of the other or the M or the empathy. Um, according to this concept of the sphere of onus or primordiality, the monad is the dimension in which, in the the dimension of that which is given itself primordially or originally to the eye. It is the dimension in which others are mirrored. So, um, it's the dimension of that which is given itself primordially, primordially originally to the eye, and this is pretty much where alien things are going to be able to come in. So the monad is different from the from the sphere of sphere, from the sphere of, own, of sphere of ownness in that um things that are alien such as the consciousnesses of others or other monads can um be experienced. Alien things as Hosrell would say. Um the sphere of onus or the primordial sphere thereby gains for Husserl the sense of a stratum of experience prior to our experience of the other, a stratum of, of experience belonging to the eye, which is supposed to underlie and found the highest stratum of our experience of the other. Okay, so this is where, in this is a part of in, 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 in Husserl's philosophy where I start to gain some kind of problems, or I mean, or I mean not problems, but I, I don't really agree that well. Um, he's saying that Essentially, in this, um, we have a stratum of experience, which is prior or, primord or pr primordial, um, which um, which is prior to our experience of the other. So, um, if you read Paul Ricoeur's One Self as Another, it's going to say that um, there cannot be a self without other, and it's saying that there cannot be any kind of thing as selfhood as being prior to other. Um, so, this is kind of where I have some disagreements with Husserl. Um, he's saying that we have to have an, an, a stratum of experience which has to build up um, in, our sphere, in our sphere of onus or our monad before we are able to have any kind of empathies. Um, so that's where I kind of disagree. Um, and there is lots of charges here again for him being solipsistic. Uh, Husserl kind of has that a lot. He gets charged of solipsism. Um, okay. Now, apperception, that's a term that is used for, uh, where did my notebook go? Oh, here it is. Apperception. Um, is the perception, it's not like perception, but it's in the, it's, it's separate from perception. It's another thing that I don't really agree with. Um, um, and I guess I don't entirely agree with the having a sphere bonus where the whole of everything proper to the eye is. Um, that I don't, I mean, I guess having a primordial sphere is not entirely what I, what I agree with either. And having the sphere bonus and the monad be separate. Uh, the monad where... Um, we have original self-givenness, and where we can, where others can be mirrored, 
Um, second, um, we have the, or I mean, next we have this aso association by Perry. First of all, on empathy, we, um, if you'll find in Husserl as well as Werner Marx, you'll uh, just, you'll hear about this um, fact that you will see in them as um, a consciousness and a su subjectivity, um, not a, a subjectivity talking about entities, but seeing me as an I subject, su 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 a, an I subjectivity, and you as an I subject subjectivity. Um, me seeing in you a subjectivity which is not my own, me seeing some things in common with you, seeing you and seeing seeing, seeing some things that are that are in common with me. That um, kind of is um, some some Husserlian essentialism right there. Um, but um, then through this kind of noticing of things that we have in common, or that noticing that um, I that you that I that you are a subjectivity which is different from my own subjectivity. We get this kind of empathy or experience of the other, and we can get this association by pairing, and having that happen enough, we can, um, and, and we can, you know, get you know larger things happening. And Husserl in the Cartesian Meditations does um, discuss discuss the idea of there along with. Um, that is. Um, Something that's really good to to study. I think that's. I mean, if you, it's good to read the Cartesian meditations and learn about the there along with. Um, if we're gonna start talking like that, I'd prefer to use Heidegger's. But uh, I mean, the idea of there along with that's just another one of those. It's 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 another one of those beings that uh, Heidegger and Sartre kind of use, but um, Husserl does has used those before and there along with is a great example um, so essentially um, we have this inter we have what is called a intermonadic community where within my monad um, everything that is self with everything that is self self given to me um, I can see other subject subjectivities that are not my own and have us kind of empathy. Now I could go into way detail. If you want great detail into this, I suggest getting this. This is not too expensive, I don't think. I bought this quite quite a while ago, but it's a great resource. I think if you want to read uh, on various things in in certainly phenomenology, but I have to highly recommend the part in here about the experience of the other by of Husserl. So I would recommend. Um, read the Cartesian Meditations, or just read the fifth one, if you want, and then read this. Um, okay, so, I guess um, I have a lot of problems with this idea of the experience of the other. Um, I would lean more towards Heidegger's and Werner Marx's idea. Marx doesn't um, use such ideas like... Uh, Marx doesn't use... A primordial sphere. He doesn't um, use the self being prior to other, you know, so much. But uh, let me know what you think. And if you want me to do more videos on Marx or Ver Werner Marx or Husserl, you know, uh, let me know because I'm interested in this and I want to talk about it. Obviously.